I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and this is my 1985 Bluebird Wander Lodge PT40. I bought this bus in 2010. This particular one has the name of Showboat. Vintage buses usually have their own names to them. I'm not sure if this bus has been called Showboat for the entirety of its life, but there's a good chance considering how original this bus is. These buses were made by Bluebird, the same company that makes school buses, and they made some of the finest motorhomes in the 1970s and 80s. This bus has a 300 gallon diesel fuel tank, a 140 gallon water tank, an 80 gallon gray water tank, and an 80 gallon black water tank. So you can stay on the road boondocking in this thing for quite a while without coming back to civilization. Up on the roof up there, that's the snorkel. That is the air intake for the engine. You will not have any trouble going through puddles with this thing. Behind this hatch, we find the batteries. These are both the engine batteries and the house batteries. You can see on the side of the engine there that it says Detroit Diesel. And after lifting the rear hatch, we can see that Detroit Diesel right here. This is a very interesting engine. This is a 6V92, 92 cubic inches per cylinder. And this is a two-stroke diesel. It is supercharged and turbocharged. All of these two-stroke Detroit diesels were supercharged. They need that in order to draw air into the engine. But this one is also turbocharged and makes 330 horsepower. Up above the engine is an engine heater for starting it on those cold days. You can start the engine from the cockpit or from back here. Opposite of those battery trays is a gigantic radiator for this engine. It takes a lot of power to run a bus like this. And this does have 50 amp 220 volt hookups as well as two 30 amp 120 volt hookups. On both sides is a pair of landing lights which you can turn on individually, allowing you to shine light in the direction to help you park. These buses do have a good amount of underground storage. However, it does not go all the way through because it needs that room for the gigantic fuel tanks and water tanks. If we take a look on the roof, there are three air conditioners. I believe all three of these are original to the bus. Looks like the plastic's falling apart on one of them. The first dish up here is the television antenna and that comes out on a mast that raises up above the bus about uh, three feet. This is a satellite television dish, the vent for the kitchen, the vent for the bathroom, gigantic storage pods. That one's a vent for the refrigerator. It's another AC unit in front of me another vent for the bedroom, and another gigantic storage pod. Let's ring the doorbell. Go inside. The bus is pretty much original since 1985. I haven't changed anything. The previous owners kept it in pretty decent shape. Spanning the entire length of the bus is a piece of leather or vinyl that covers the carpet, making it very easy to clean. These do just hook to the floor and they can be removed easily. Up front is the cockpit and I'll go over that later. There are a set of speakers up here. Over above the door is the first set of light switches. These were never labeled, so I labeled them myself so I'd remember what they did. This little table does fold up into this file cabinet, but I thought it was kind of nice to just mount a TV to it permanently, so that won't fold down right now. All of the drapes are electrically controlled. With this switch, the drapes will move side to side. We'll go all the way up to the front, and it will come all the way back and fold into here. I'd have to have the generator on or be plugged in for this to work. So the switch is not doing anything right now because I have the generator off, so it's not making any noise. Coming back in the overhead compartments, more speakers. And here is where you would select your TV sources between the antenna, satellite TV, etc. Next, we get to the dinette and the control panel. 
It lets you monitor the things on the bus. We can turn on an alarm that's letting us know that our batteries are getting low. Another alarm to let us know that our refrigerator is getting too hot. I can start and stop the generator from here. This is a refrigerator fan that helps to keep it cool behind the refrigerator. We turn on our water pump. This bus has five built-in smoke alarms. We can turn them all on and off from this switch here. It also has a waste odor control system. And I believe what this does when you turn this on is it periodically heats the black tank, helping to have everything degrade in there. Over here, we can see the temperature inside and outside. We can also set an alarm. Down here is our freshwater tank, gray water tank, our black water tank, and we can also monitor our propane tank from here. This bus has two 120 volt circuits coming into it. If you're plugged into a 220 source, it automatically divides them between the two legs. And down here is about one of seven thermostat sets in this bus. These only control heat as all of the air conditioning is controlled either from the driver's seat or the individual air conditioners. Usually on these buses somewhere, there's a hidden safe and mine is hidden here underneath the dinette. Unfortunately, I have never been able to open this. If someone is a safe cracker and wants to have a go at it, let me know. It'd be pretty interesting to see what's inside here. On the driver's side, located behind this speaker, we have our drapery controls and our master switch to cut the electronics in the bus. It's a pretty neat curio cabinet here. You can store all the things that you have gathered on your adventures. There's three types of heating on this bus, heat from the engine, heat from propane, and there are electric heaters like this scattered about as well. When I got this bus, all of the plumbing was frozen, so I did put this sink set in, so this is not the original one. There is a built-in countertop blender, and that is original. It also came with an ice maker. This is original to the bus. Has a little oven, a stove top, and I did upgrade the microwave a few years ago. As well as upgrading the refrigerator, the original unit was a three-way. It would charge on DC, AC, or propane. This one works only on propane and AC, but I have it hooked up to an inverter, so it actually runs off of the batteries. That way I can leave it running all the time and I never have to worry about it. The bathroom door is open right now, but I wanted to show you that it can close off the bedroom area, giving you a really big area. You can take a shower in there, have access to the bedroom and the closet, get dressed in a really large area there and still be separated from the rest of the guests. I've left the bathroom all original. These are all the original fixtures in here. There are three phones on the bus. You can pick these up and you can call the driver and you can also talk to the bedroom. So from any of those places, you can ring any other section of the bus. In here, we have another way to turn the water pump on. We also have control for our exhaust fans. Here in the bottom of the closet, opposite of the bathroom, we have something that's becoming standard in a lot of campers and in RVs, but was really ahead of its time back then. This is central vacuum unit. So you can keep your vacuum here in the closet, just plug it in and clean up your motorhome. Moving further back is another door that we can use to separate the bedroom from the rest of the coach. We have another electric heater down there, a gigantic queen size bed, and all the way back here in the very back is the iconic Bluebird Wander Lodge clock. Up here is a switch for raising up the TV antenna mast, as well as a controller for moving it around. This is the second location for these. I'll show you another one later. Again, there's another phone here in the bedroom. Behind all of these glass panels is more storage. Quite a lot of room back here. 
In the overhead compartment above the driver is the controls for the television, which is located right there above the driver's seat. And this acts as a backup camera for the coach when you put it in reverse. Above the passenger seat, we do have controls where you can plug into your own CB jack and adjust your CB volume. And for the driver, you get controls for days. Let's start right above the driver. We have our CB jacks. We can control the front exhaust fans. We can turn on and off all three air conditioners from here. And these controls turn on the television and select the station. When you put the coach in reverse, the TV automatically switches to a backup camera. In the panel to the right of that, we have the heat selector. We would select this for summer so that the heat is not running through the coach. It stays back there with the engine. We have an auxiliary electric water pump to help pump the coolant up here if we do want heat. This is the dimmer for the backlighting on the controls. On the roof of the bus, there are spotlights and we can aim those individually. We can select our right one and our left one. Both of them have floodlights and spotlights. We can direct them and move them around here. We can also change how quickly they move with our little joystick right here. This is a switch that activates a fan for the rear backup camera. We have our air conditioning controls. This is for the air conditioning compressor that runs off of the engine. And these blow up here in the cockpit. Next to that, we have some displays for timers. Safe line that lets us know if we are plugged into shore power. When we turn the ignition on, this will start flashing and beeping, letting us know not to drive away while plugged into shore power. Right here, I can start and stop my generator. We have an odometer. And right here, we can put up and down our TV antenna mast. There's two switches because you must hold down both of them in order to operate it. Above these controls is our CB. Beneath that is a light for the CB. We have a radio. Obviously, I put this one in. The original one would not be this modern. We have an altimeter. We also have a fuel vacuum gauge. Like I said, this is a television and backup camera, and it still does work. To the right of that is gauges for the generator. We have oil pressure, water temperature, voltage, how many hours are on it. We have ammeters for the battery charger, how much AC voltage of both legs, and the amperage of both legs of the AC circuit. Located just above the pedals is the kill switch. You can kill all the power right before you leave. That way you don't come back to a dead bus. We of course have the release for the air brakes, and this is a trailer brake controller. To the right of that, these are vacuum operated switches that control vents for blowing fresh air around the cockpit. On the floor is another telephone and it has hydraulically operated leveling jacks. So you can jack up each corner individually and get your coach leveled out. This front driver's seat is electrically operated. To the right of that, we have a couple more air operated switches. We can dump the air out of our tag axle suspension we can dump the air out of all of our suspension, and it actually has a air-operated steering wheel tilt as well. Above that is the ignition switch, and this has a five-speed Allison automatic transmission with a trans brake. So you can put this down or up based on how much transmission braking you want. And there's also a switch to turn on the transmission retarder, which only comes on when you hit the brake pedal. This one you can hit anytime you want. If you bring it down, it will start to give you more transmission braking. Between my legs is a cable. And if the engine were to run away, pull on this cable, it clicks a little thing, blocks off all the air going to the engine and should shut it off. Up here on the dash, we have a speedometer, a turbo boost gauge, air pressure for the rear, engine oil temperature, engine oil pressure, the engine alarm is on right now because I have the ignition on and the engine is not running. We have engine water temperature, transmission oil temperature. We have a pyrometer in the exhaust. 
our front air pressure, a tachometer. This switches our compartment lights. There is a built-in burglar alarm that we can turn on and off. The bottom step when we came in is electrically operated. We can turn on that step right here. We can lock and unlock the main door from here. Our rear parking lights and our front and rear landing lights. This is our transmission retarder. With this flipped on, it will automatically give us some transmission braking when we hit the brake pedal. High idle is used when you first start the bus. Turn that on and once it is warmed up for a slight amount of time, it will bring the idle up to do the rest of the warm up and airing everything up. We have our headlight controls. We can turn on and off our marker lights, our driving lights, which are kind of like fog lights. This does have cruise control, our fuel gauge, our tag axle air pressure. We have a little fuel light, a water and fuel light, and then various warning lights. Down here is for the leveling system. So if I turn that on, it will show us what corners we need to raise in order to level the bus out. We can control our driver and passenger wipers individually. Wiper heaters was an option, but I don't have it. This is for our washer fluid controls. We have heated mirrors, different defrosters, fan blowers for the heaters. The switch turns on and off the lights for the leveling system. If we have trouble starting the main engine or the generator, this switch here links all the batteries together so that hopefully, if you're having trouble starting one, it will start. There are three different types of horns on the bus. There is an electric horn, an air horn, and a musical horn. The musical horn uses this selector. You can change songs right here. So when we turn the power on, it'll start playing a song. We can change the song. It'll play a different one. We can start it over here. We can change our songs right now. Flip that, and it'll start playing the next song. Then we have the engine voltmeter and ammeter. Within reach of the driver is our CB microphone. And this coach even came equipped from the factory with an escort radar detector. And it's surprising that this still works today. I did upgrade the generator. Let's fire it up, and I'll show that to you. If we open this compartment right here, this is the radiator for the original generator. But if we open this compartment right here, we have a switch that lets the generator come in and out right here. And it just pops out the front of the bus. So I put a more modern Cummins Onan generator in here. It's very quiet compared to the Perkins diesel that this originally had. I still have the Perkins Kohler generator. Maybe I'll restore that in a video later on. But it surprises a lot of people that this area in the front is not used for the engine that propels the coach down the road. That is only for the generator. So if we want to start the Wander Lodge, we just turn the ignition key, turn the engine on. I already have some air built up, otherwise the alarm would be going off right now. But we can hit our high idle switch. I don't know if you could hear that, the engine sped up right there. And that will let you more quickly get all of your air up, your suspension, brake air, and let the engine get warmed up so you don't have to spend as much time waiting for all those things to happen. I like the sound of this thing because it sounds like a bulldozer. It has a really neat sound going down the road. Right now I'm on my way down to the local off-road park, I'm going to be helping out do some work down there. My friend Daryl should have his Bluebird Wander Lodge down there. It's the first time that we've ever had both of these together. His is quite a bit newer and he completely restored the inside of his. 
I don't think I've been across the scales with just the Bluebird. I've probably always been pulling a trailer. So let's put it across the scales here. See how much this thing weighs. Thirty-six thousand two hundred and twenty pounds. It's actually lighter than I thought it was. I was guessing that it would be in the forties. This one is a nineteen ninety-eight Wander Lodge. Exterior of this one is still all original. This one is three feet longer than mine. This one is quite a bit different than mine. Cockpit is similar, but different. A lot of the switches have been moved into different places, even over here above the door where you enter. Looks a little bit pink in here. It might just be the lighting. A lot of mirrors in here. This is the LX version, so it's a little bit wider than mine as well. All these mirrors make it seem like it's larger than it is. Install the ceiling fan. This is the location of the original television. I'll turn on the lights for you, but I don't know where they are. And like all the other coaches that I've had, I don't see any light switches on any of the walls here. There are not any slide outs on this coach. No slide outs on my coach either. Makes it really nice because when you're going down the road, it doesn't hinder you from getting to any other part of the bus. You can always walk right down the aisle, get to the bathroom, the bedroom, wherever you want to go. Up on top of this Wander Lodge, you can see there's a lot more space. Some solar panels have been added now. If you compare that to the roof of my bus, I hardly have any space left up there. Maybe I should take those storage pods off so I can install a solar setup like this one. He said this is not enough solar to keep up with the draws. So he'll probably want to get at least eight panels up here somewhere. And I was thinking about it last night. I could install some panels over the top of a few things because if you look at the height of the AC and the storage pods, a few of the things I could actually cover up with solar panels and it wouldn't hurt their functionality. It would actually shade the coach a little more, keep it a little cooler inside. Well, I hope you like this introductory video into my Bluebird Wander Lodge. I haven't done a lot with the Wander Lodge in a while, but after using it this weekend, my enthusiasm for it is growing again. And maybe in the future, I'll do some more projects on it. I had to do a lot of work to it when I got it. All the plumbing was frozen, so a lot of the fixtures I've replaced, I've pretty much been in every inch behind everything, fixing the plumbing on it. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe. Oh, I thought I was going to stay out of speed.